cool. So listen, I just want to take a few minutes. We're, we've been on this really, I think, pretty cool journey for the past few months, talking about relationships, you know, how heaven's family is what God's really after. And so we, uh, we started talking uh, past few weeks about how to really connect intentionally. And last week, you might remember that I had put up on the screen your divine connections, right? If you missed that, you got to go back on heavensinvasion.com and, and watch that because it was a really simple way to describe how God wants us to connect with each other in the body of Christ so that we can advance, okay? And there was one part of that that I left out because you got to get the first part first. First things first. Learn how to connect with your family and you'll be released to really have a sphere of influence because that's the next step. So I want to talk to you today about the Great Commission and how this all relates to the Great Commission. So who can tell me what is the Great Commission and can you quote the verse? All you Bible scholars out there. Come on. Come on, come on. Who knows the Great Commission? What is it? Uh, okay. All of you, all of you, King James aficionados. <laughs> yeah, it's the last few verses of Matthew 28, right? It's the Great Commission. And so, when you think about the Great Commission, right? What comes to mind? How how do we typically picture the Great Commission? You know, what does it look like to do that? Okay, evangelize. But what does that look like? You're very spiritual. What does it typically look like? <laughs> what does it typically look like when you talk about the Great Commission and evangelism? I know it looks like that to you, but I'm talking about in general. <laughs> Spread the love, dude. Okay, you're, 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 you're blowing my analogy here. So it's like. Well, typically, typically the Great Commission has been pictured as events where you go out on the street corners and preach the gospel, right? You have evangelistic crusades, you hand out tracts, all these sort of things, right? Isn't that what we've typically understood to be the Great Commission? Okay, um, so, so how effective is that? It's not a whole really a lot of effectiveness there because people are they're not going to hear that anymore Right. It's like they don't want to hear we're just one more piece of the noise that's out there And so as Anna was suggesting yeah, we we're now really functioning in the supernatural in uh, Fulfilling the Great Commission, right? We want to see people healed and set free and you know all that good stuff But I want to share with you tonight another way of looking at the Great Commission and fulfilling that. I was, you know, for a long time, I was really kind of wrestling with the Lord over his approach to evangelism, where he would come and, and basically walk somewhere and just announce, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And I'm like, well, well what does that look like? How do we do that? You know, so I was wrestling with him over this for quite a while. And one day he I should have tried to find this because some of you will, will remember that there used to be a commercial for one of the phone companies, maybe it was Verizon, I don't remember, but it was reach out and touch someone. You remember that? Any of you old enough to remember that? Reach out and touch someone, right? Is there a song that goes with that? Reach out and touch someone. Thank you. <laughs> exactly. Because I, I couldn't remember the song, but I've never jingled with that. So anyway, yeah. that popped into my head the, the word reach and it, it became an acronym each letter represented something and when the Lord was done downloading that I was like that's pretty cool and he said I know <laughs> so I want to share it with me with you tonight what that looks like because if you receive this and begin to put it into action you're gonna see some amazing things in terms of how God is going to connect you with the people that he's actually created you to bless. Did you know that you were created to bless people? You really are. 
because we're created in his image and you know he's a serial blesser he can't help himself this is just who he is and what he does you know so what does R re represent well R represents uh, the, the phrase recognize relationships and what does that mean well we we have to recognize first of all that every relationship that you have is not an accident but we don't think about that every relationship that you have is not an accident God knew right he knew that you were gonna be somehow in that person's space and they would be in yours and whether it's you know by blood or just by proximity or by job or neighborhood who knows but we all have certain relationships and we got to start with the idea that this was God's idea to put me in this kind of connection with somebody right so that's number one right I, I we need to ask him once we get that it's like we want to ask him, Lord, what are your purposes for that person? Now, here's what I want you to do. I want you to think of somebody that you don't really know well, but yet you, you've got some kind of relationship with them. Let's, let's be practical here. and Think about one person that you've got some kind of relationship with. Maybe it's not too deep, whatever, but, but you don't know too well. You know? So what you want to do is, Papa, what, what are your purposes for them? What's going on in their life, right? And then you want to ask him to give you favor and access into their heart and life. Say, so, Lord, I, I really want to have favor with them. I want to have access to them. Again, why? Because you're in a relationship with them. <laughs> you see how that works? It's like God put that, he set that up. Now why? Why am I in a relationship with this person? You know, what's the purpose there? Right, so that's R. E, and this is where we get very spiritual. No, I'm kidding. E stands for edify and encourage. Edify and encourage. What does edify mean? Who knows? Build up. Yeah, build up, strengthen, right? We know what we know what encouragement is. Did you know that there are only three things that every person needs to know? See, I just love how God keeps things simple. Because if they got too complicated, he'd leave me behind. <laughs> Right? He keeps things simple. There are only three things that every single person on the face of this earth right now needs to know. You know what they are? You ready? Number one, they need to see God as He truly is. Think about all the lies you were taught about God and how you, you saw Him in ways that weren't real according to who He really is. Right? next one is they need to see themselves as he sees them right think about where you used to be how you used to see yourself right compared to how now hopefully you see yourself in a lot more alignment with how he sees you right so that's what people need the third thing this one just grabs my heart every time People need to see the world as he sees it. Do you realize that if we all got that, there wouldn't be a whole lot going on on Facebook right now? <laughs> okay, <laughs> let's be real. Okay, so that's E, that's edifying and encourage with those three things. So the second, or well, the third letter is A, and that stands for assist and activate. What does that look like? Well. Is there some kind of practical how-to, you know, that you can do to help that person? To help them learn something, help them grow in something, right? Do you need, or how could you model what it looks like to be walking with the Lord with them? And just show them by your life and your lifestyle how it looks to be connected with Papa. Right? So you're assisting and you're activating them into some new things, right? Then C stands for care for their needs. What are those needs that they have in their life, right? How does the Lord want to release his power through you to touch them in some way? Right? Maybe they need healing. Maybe they need encouragement. You know, they need a prophetic word. They need whatever. 
right? So you get to do that. You get to be very, very much focused on where they're at, what their needs are. And Lord, how do you want to use me to touch them? The last one, H, means uh, help them to reach their destiny. Help them to begin to get a vision for their life. To understand why they're on this earth. Right? That's, oh my gosh, I love doing that. Right? What's their purpose? God did, just given destiny and how can you help them reach that? Okay? Because you know what we want to do, don't you? <laughs> we want to bring people up alongside us and then release them to do what we just did. <laughs> they did it now. Multiplication. See, that's the Great Commission. But it's, it's expressed in a way that doesn't require you to stand on a street corner and preach and hand out tracts. It just means you are going to be intentional about the relationships that the Lord's given you. And in doing that, I'm going to, I have this as a handout, so don't fret. I know that a lot of you are going, I don't know. I got a handout for you. All right, so you'll be able to take this home and, and work with it. But this is, this is, in essence, what we're talking about with the Great Commission, right? When he gave us the Great Commission, he didn't say, go therefore and stand on the street corner and preach. He said, go therefore, make disciples. And this is how you do it. Using a simple acronym, R-E-A-C-H. All of us can do that because all of us can be a friend, right? All of us can have an interest and an influence in somebody's life just by loving them in these specific ways. So I want to encourage you to begin to put this in practice for yourself. We'll talk more about some more specific things regarding your personal destiny and how that gets worked out. But for now, I feel like we're, we're at a good point to kind of let's, let's flow with this, okay? And so over the next few weeks, we're gonna have an opportunity, I hope, to hear from people who are being intentional about walking with each other and being encouragements to each other and how, how that's working out, okay? Because as I mentioned to you last week, that is absolutely the only way you're going to get where you've got to go. I don't care how many conferences, seminars, trainings you go to, if you don't have somebody that you're walking with, someone that mentors you, someone that's, that, that is a peer on either side of you that's walking with you, you're, you're going to miss it. You just will. Because God designed us to move connected. And I just love that. One more thing I'm going to share, then we're going to worship. I got this little cartoon that I want to share with you. Augie, are you back there? Yeah. Let's see if we can get this thing going. I want to teach you, to, I want to share with you some things about how to know who God's connecting you to. Mmm, mm, watch. It's very good food here. Even if the food were terrible, I'd be grateful to have it. And the road to Jericho is very dangerous. Innkeeper, help me. This man is badly hurt. Lay him here. Josh, quickly, fetch hot water and clean rags. All I had was the hem of my own robe. I'm afraid. No, no, you did fine, young man. But so dangerous. Robbers might have attacked you while you bandaged him. I couldn't very well leave him there to die, could I? Those two men came along the Jericho Road just an hour ago. Well, he must have been robbed and beaten right after you passed then. I thought at first he was dead. I think he'll live. Thanks to you, sir. Where did you travel from? Samaria. Samaria. A Samaritan. Ugh. Josh, make a bed for this poor man there by the fire so he won't get a chill. Yes, Papa. He's sure lucky you came along. <laughs> no, I just did what anyone would do.
Sir, are these the men? Yes. Those are the men. You! You! You liar! Uh, I'm asked him ten times, just like you said, Kish. Oh! Oh! Come along. You're so dumb. <laughs> well, they won't be robbing anymore. Very good food, but Samaritans. Oh. Yes, you ought to be more careful about whom you allow to stay in your inn. <clears throat> How are you feeling this morning? M much better, kind sir. Oh good, I'm glad. Here's the money for my lodging, sir. And here's payment for this man's bed and food until he's better. And if it isn't enough, well, I'll pay you more when I come back through, after my business is done in Moab. Thank you, sir. I hope my son grows up to be as kind as you. I just did what anyone would do. Peace be unto you. And peace be with you. So am I the only one that thinks that that Levite looked a little bit like Stan Laurel, Laurel and Hardy? <laughs> what? <laughs> but, um, you know, this was something else that the Lord had spoken to me a number of years ago, um, using the Good Samaritan as kind of a jumping off place. Um, you know, he, he asked me this question, do you have Good Samaritan eyes? You know, I was like, oh, oh. Do I have good Samaritan eyes? What is that? Well, this this guy, right? He he saw the man beaten, right? He saw the condition of this guy, and he did something about it. I love, you know, in the cartoon. Well, I only did what anybody else would do, right? I just only did what anybody else would do, you know. And so the three the three questions that we can ask after thinking about the Good Samaritan, right? Well, who do I see? Right? Who do I see around me? And you can ask the Lord, Lord, show me who you want to love through me. Who do you want to love through me? You know? And and make a note, make a note of those people. Right? And then the second question is, what is their condition? Right? The Good Samaritan saw the condition of this poor guy on the ground. Well, what's the condition, Lord, of these people that you're showing me to love? You know, what are their needs? What are their challenges? Take some time. Find out. And then the third question is, Papa, what are you doing in their life right now? The thing I love so much about prophetic ministry, right, is that we're not in the business of talking about things that he's not talking about. Right? Lord, I want to know what you're up to. I want to know what's going on in their life. That you want to say to them. And then I'll be happy to share that. I mean, I just love Patrice, right? Going down to that thing. He's like, Lord, I want a word. <laughs> it's like, come on. That's what we want to do, right? And so being able to do that, right? Being able to see. The thing I love so much about the prophetic, right, is that the Lord will show you what their future looks like, what, how he sees them, what he created them for, and all we got to do is just say, hey, you know what, God just showed me something cool about you, you know, and bam, you just share that with their heart. So again, I have all this down as a, as a handout, and um, we can just put that in the back. You guys can pick one up on your way out, and uh, have fun with this. This is so so cool that we get to do stuff like this. And I, I look around and I see so many of you that I've had the privilege of walking with and working with and watching you develop and grow, you know, as I've been able to simply speak into your life and walk and, and, and you know, that's, it's just so awesome that when you get a hold of something that the Lord is showing you and you actually start to do it and you watch the fruit, 
you know. You're going to have that if you haven't already. You're going to have that awesome privilege and blessing of watching people just grow and blossom. <laughs> it's good stuff. Any questions? Pretty simple, right?